Illinois GOP Congressman and January 6th committee member Adam Kinzinger releasing a compilation of threatening and vulgar calls his office has received, including this one. Listen. He's going to come protest in front of your house this weekend. We know who your family is, and we're going to get you. We're going to get your wife. We're going to get your kids, you little c Okay, well, that was... That'll wake you up in the morning. Uh, Niall Standage, White House columnist for The Hill, is joining us right now. Uh, certainly, these are angry constituents who are calling uh, for a number of reasons. But Kinzinger releasing these calls just weeks after the Capitol Police released data showing that there is a surge in threats against lawmakers over the past five years. We put some of those statistics up on the screen there. I mean, you think about it. Since 2017, threats against lawmakers have essentially tripled. How serious are these threats being taken? They're being taken very seriously, Adrian, because they're part of a picture where there is an increasing undercurrent of violence to our politics generally, I think. The calls that Congressman Kinzinger released are, I think, under the label of shocking but not surprising. I mean, it's terrible that any member of Congress, whatever their party or political beliefs, should face those kinds of threats, threats not just to them but to their spouse and to their child. But unfortunately, it's part of a, a sort of rather bleak landscape that is also reflected in those figures you put up on screen. You know, there are a lot of people who believe there is so much hypocrisy in politics. Some of the people who would say that the, the language needs to be kinder, that we shouldn't incite uh, the kind of anger and vitriol that we've seen are sometimes the same ones who are using insightful language. So uh, let's listen to Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot, who is raising eyebrows with her recent comments in regards to those threatening calls. Here's what she said yesterday. The toxicity in our public discourse is a thing that I think we should all be concerned about, right? But just a week earlier, uh, Mayor Lightfoot said this about Justice Clarence Thomas, clearly in response to his opinion in the Roe v. Wade decision. Thank you, Clarence Thomas. And again, we're using such short sound bites. I hope that people at home are able to follow, but she used an expletive. There are a lot of people who would agree with her. Uh, there are a lot of people who speak like that in their home watching right now. Uh, but many in America still believe that public figures, especially politicians, should be held to a higher standard. So have we lost all honor for public office? We certainly, I think, have lost any kind of consistency of principle. The gulf there between what Mayor Lightfoot said about toxicity in politics and what she said from the stage in the clip that you showed, that, that's a huge gulf. And I think honestly displays a, quite a lack of self-awareness to make the comments she made only days after using that profanity. But look, this is, I'm not letting her off the hook personally, but she's not alone in these kind of double standards where people so often in politics say, well, those other people on the other side are different from us. We are passionate, but they're angry, or we are drawing contrasts, but they're engaging in political or personal abuse. There is an enormous lack, I think, of consistency of the way those principles are applied. And it naturally breeds public cynicism and the idea that people make these claims about honor when it suits them in order to make a political point or advance a political cause. And the same so-called principles, in inverted commas, just get thrown out whenever it is convenient to throw them out. Yes, and we saw a lot of that happening over the past couple of years. And uh, it's like, do as I say, but not as I do in too many instances. Let's get back to Kinzinger. He and Liz Cheney, the sole Republicans on the January 6th committee, considered traitors by many in the GOP. Uh, and that is why uh, Kinzinger, for sure, is getting a lot of these threatening and vulgar calls, uh, not justifying any of that. But do you believe that this is going to change the landscape for not just the Republican Party, but for all parties as we approach the midterms, the general election in November and, and beyond, looking ahead to the presidential election? Are constituents looking for a gentler, warmer, softer side to politics? Or is this still working? Does this still work? Does this still just bring more airtime? I think, that unfortunately, it still works. And I think, unfortunately, it's one of these situations where what people say they want and what their behavior, voting-wise and otherwise, shows they want 
are two different things. I would love to say that people want a more gentler, more constructive politics. But these kind of threats aren't just being made against Congressman Kinzinger. Congressman Fred Upton got death threats late last year for voting for an infrastructure bill. I mean, this kind of toxicity is infiltrating politics, and not just politics, honestly, but the media and, and the political culture as well. A lot of the incentives are misaligned, it seems to me, and favor those who are just, you know, shoveling coal in the outrage factory, which is a fairly depressing trend, but it works for people. You should title your next uh, Hill article, Shoveling Coal into the Outrage, what did you say? <laughs> I said factory. Furnace would be a better word, maybe. I'll get, I'll get the sound bite right for next time. Niall, the poet we didn't know. All right, Niall, thank you so much. Good, good title. All, <laughs> always good, Adrian. Have a good day. See you soon. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.